I am so thrilled to be back with an updated hair color video for you. I have three major changes that I want to share, and the first is that I now do a separate formula for my roots with level 20 developer, and then I will mix up a separate formula with level 10 developer for the rest of my hair. The second big change that I've made is that I switched out my Wella Color Charm developer for three different brands that I sort of mix and match. Vivitone, Pravana, and then another brand called Satin Hair Color. And for the Satin Hair Color, I actually use their Cover Gray formula for my roots. So that's what I'll use in today's video. And then I'll use a Vivitone Level 10 for the rest of my hair. I have two empty mixing bottles ready to go, one for my roots formula and one for my second formula for the rest of my hair. I have two pairs of disposable gloves, a must if you are coloring your hair at home, a color brush with a pintail edge, and this is a hair color key. You don't necessarily need this. I like it. I added it to my cart one time for free shipping. <laughs> so there we go. This is 7G, and then I also have one tube of 8RG and two tubes of 8G. This is everything that I get prepped on my counter before I color my hair. Here are my roots one more time. As you can see, I am pretty much just 100% gray white at this point. There's no more salt and pepper. We are fully gray. So I like to comb through my hair and make sure that it's super silky before I color. For those who asked previously, I do wash my hair the day before and then try to put no products on it so that it's fairly clean and ready to go when I color my hair the next day. And I'm adding a little bit of oil to my ends here because I was overdue for a haircut. <laughs> like very many months overdue. So there we go. And I don't rinse that oil off my hands. I just put gloves on and give my cuticles a deep treatment as well. My first tube of color is the 7G. This is seven golden blonde. I am naturally a level seven. So I put in six to eight pea size drops, just like a frozen pea size amount. And this for me really grounds the color and gives it a little bit of depth. Because I have gray white roots, I do need that to really keep it from going too peachy. Next is 8RG, reddish blonde. If you've never colored your hair before, by the way, you take off the cap, flip it, and then pierce the tube with the cap. This is how I use that tube key. You roll it down to make sure that you get every little bit out of the tube. I do just under one ounce of the 8RG, and then I save the other half of the tube for the body of my hair. This is 8G, this is a golden blonde, and I use the full tube of this, two ounces. If this feels like it's going really fast, please know that I will have the formula on the blog and the link to Girl Get Glamorous will be in the description box and below in the comments as well. So if it feels like the formula is going too fast, it's all there. I now have three ounces of color, so I will add six ounces of level 20 or the Cover Gray developer, and I'll have nine ounces of total product in the bottle. Wella Color Charm is a two to one formula, meaning for every ounce of color, you add two ounces of developer. And this is why I like to have an extra large bottle. I like to have lots of space in the bottle so that that color really gets evenly mixed up I don't wanna have any little pockets of color hiding <laughs> that don't get mixed up and can mess up the results of the hair. Now I'm just grabbing a little bit of my Cover Gray developer and putting it on the temples of my hair. This is a very sneaky part for me of my hair that just does not like to hold on to color. So if you have sections of your hair like that that just want to go white or gray or lose color before the rest of them, pop on a little developer and you will be happy with your results. This is a favorite trick of mine for coloring my hair at home. I like to part my hair all the way down to the nape of my neck, start at the back, and then go all the way up. And as you can see here, <laughs> I forgot that I had cut the tip off the edge of my bottle so that I could get a little bit more flow with the color. And as you can see, that worked <laughs> because a lot of color came out. So anyhow, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. And I'm also taking my color brush. I used the pintail side to part my hair to give me really nice clean lines. 
And now I'm flipping that over and using the brush to push the color down into the roots to make sure that it's really getting in all the way down to my scalp so that I get 100% gray coverage. This is really important because if I don't do this, I do notice a big difference. And now I'll go all around the sides of my face. I'm supposed to do this first. I always forget. <laughs> always. So I'll push that into the sides of my face and then I lift my hair up and go behind my ears and at the nape of my neck as well, which I did edit out just because I wanted to keep this video moving. But as you can see, I go all around the edge of my scalp and this is just a nice way to make sure that everything is covered and comes out even. So after that's done, I'll go back in and do my roots at the top of my head and then go side to side in horizontal layers. Let me show you this and then we will speed it up just because it can get a little bit monotonous. And what I like to do, sometimes I'll start on the left side of my head and then the next time I color my hair, I'll start on the right side and I'll flip flop back and forth so that it sort of evens out over the year as I'm coloring my hair, which side gets color first. One thing that I do want to mention, I do try my best to just get my roots formula on the regrowth and to not let it get onto the rest of my hair. This prevents color striping, which can make the color look a little bit less natural, make the results look less natural. It is kind of tricky. I do my best. <laughs> I am only human. And so it doesn't always work out, but I do encourage you if you're going to color your hair at home to try to really just get that color on the regrowth as well. So as you can see, I'm trying to get this on as quickly and accurately as possible. And then here is my most favorite trick. Now that all the color's on, I will, with my with gloves still on, go back in and just really lightly massage the back of my head. This is a great way to make sure that I do get color everywhere and that there are no little pockets that miss out on color. The key is to massage really lightly so that you don't remove any color, but that it does get distributed everywhere. And here is my next most favorite trick. Siri, please set an alarm for 30 minutes from now. I used to do the time math myself, and now I let the robots do it for me. Right before that 30 minutes is up, I will mix up the formula for the rest of my hair. This is one ounce of 8RG, two ounces of 8G, three ounces of color total, and then I add six ounces of level 10 developer and shake it up, shake it up, shake it up until it's completely even and then it's ready for my hair. So once again, one ounce of 8RG, two ounces of 8G, three ounces of color total, and then I add six ounces of level 10. Now my hair is really over processed. I've been coloring it for over 20 years. So for me, I like to do these horizontal layers and start at the bottom now. I add the color at the bottom layer from roots to ends, use the brush to work it in, make sure that it's really saturated. I can go back in and add a second coat on this layer if I need to, but I've found that starting on these bottom layers works really well for me so that these top layers of my hair don't get over-processed. Sometimes if they get over-processed, I notice that the color can come out a little bit funky, almost like gray or green or just a little bit weird. So if I start at the bottom, I get that really nice strawberry blonde shade throughout. Once again, I'll divide my hair into a horizontal layer and then go back and forth and really work this in. Once the hair is all colored, I will pile it on top of my head and just add any extra color to make sure that I really do get full coverage on my head. Once that is on, <laughs> I clean up the rest of my house because it can get a little bit messy doing this second part of the formula at home. You can leave the formula on your ends for another 10 minutes. And then at that point, I will go and rinse my hair and then I shampoo it twice. And then this is the third major change that I have made. Instead of using a moisturizing deep conditioner, I switched to this K-Beauty Keratin Protein Mask and my hair comes out like silk. It is just incredible. Okay, one more time. Here is my before and then here is my after. I love a good before and after. I just really love this color. I think it comes out really natural looking. And because of that protein mask, you can see how shiny my hair is. It doesn't, to me, look 
damaged or like I just colored it. And this is directly after coloring my hair. So I'm really excited about the new developers and the new conditioner. I think they make a big difference in how healthy my hair feels after I color it. So this is indoors in studio lighting, meaning I have my lights on. So let's go outside in natural light. This is in indirect sunlight, meaning I'm outside kind of in the shade on our balcony. As you can see, this is just a nice blonder version of the original strawberry blonde formula. You know, what's interesting here is I actually, as I'm looking at my roots, I feel like I could have probably left the formula on my roots for another five or 10 minutes before I did the color on the middle and ends of my hair. So I feel like every single time you do your hair, you can kind of live and learn and make notes for how you wanna tweak things next time. And that's what I really appreciate about At Home Beauty. It's sort of constantly, you know, learning, tweaking, growing. Anyhow, I think that this is just an absolutely gorgeous color. Two more things that I wanna go over really quickly. Because editing took me a while, we were moving cross country, I touched up my roots again. And this time, instead of using the cover gray, I actually used the Vivitone Level 20 developer. I really liked the coverage that I got, so I think I'll probably stick with the Vivitone Level 20. I wanted to share that just in case you're in the same boat with me in terms of gray coverage. It's good to experiment and see you know, see what works for you. The second thing I want to talk about is using a color touch-up mask. This one is from Christophe Robin. This is a French luxury hair care brand, so it is a little bit pricier. I want to say it was $52 for eight ounces. I did purchase this myself. This is not PR. However, they did send me a discount code to give to you guys, so I will put that below because it was a good coat. I wanna say 25% off. This is my favorite strawberry blonde mask. It deposits the perfect amount of reddish color. This chic copper is just truly the best red shade I've found. If you are looking for something that's a little bit more of a budget-friendly alternative, I totally get that. The other one that I like is Cara Color in copper. It's a little bit more red versus the Christoph Robin chic copper but still really natural looking, really pretty. So two great options. I don't have the Cara Color right now because I just stocked up on these, but I wanted to share that because I do like to use this about once a week just to freshen up the red. I hope that info helps. I hope that this video helps. Feel free to ask any questions you have below. As a reminder, I am not a licensed colorist, so I can't answer specific questions about your hair color. For example, if you're like, I'm a brunette, what do I do to get this hair color? I do not know. So in those cases, I recommend reaching out to a licensed colorist. I can definitely answer questions though if you have questions about my formula, anything that you feel like you'd like a little bit more clarification on. So ask away or just say hi. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.